<laughs> Ava, we'll start with you, having just copped up your title. Um, <laughs> Rochdale by-election. Did Keir Starmer wake up to his worst nightmare this morning? Uh, I think Keir Starmer was expecting it. So I spent quite a bit of time in the constituency last week and it was very clear that it was going to be a George Galloway win. I don't think that Labour were expecting it to be the majority that he actually achieved. I mean, he had... You think they'd think they'd come... They'd come well, it fourth they came, wasn't it? Well, yeah, but with 7.7% uh, of the vote. So they yeah. lost a 10,000 vote majority. I mean, that is absolutely astonishing. And what the worst part of this was, they were hoping that a lot of the postal votes had already gone in, gone in before they distanced themselves from Azar Ali, who was their candidate. And it turns out, actually, not a lot of postal votes have gone in at all. So this really was a George Galloway campaign right from the beginning. He was going to win. I think I called it last week. He was going to win right from go. the beginning. A Ava Centino, <laughs> all, all, always getting it right. But let's be absolutely clear, because, of course, the Labour Party withdrew their support from their candidate, Azar Ali, after some comments he'd made which were labelled anti-Semitic. But because it was too late... Because the, the ballot papers, if you like, had already been printed. And as Ava said, lots of them had even been sent to people as a postal vote. He did still appear on the ballot paper with the Labour symbol next to him, listed as the Labour candidate. So even though the Labour Party had withdrawn their support for lots of people who don't watch Talk TV, aren't as well informed as you are at home, they wouldn't necessarily have known that, would they, Matthew? I think they, I think they would have known it because people, the British electorate, are actually pretty bright, pretty switched yeah. on. So, no, this was a mess from Labour, there's absolutely no doubt about it. I think they should never have allowed Azar Ali onto the ballot paper in the first place. They should have done better vetting. Once he had been shown to say the things he had said, yes, he apologised, but I think Keir Starmer was actually slow to act. This is a dark moment for British politics. This is a moment when George Galloway, who said some entirely unacceptable things over the years and continues to say them, has become elected to Parliament. And I think if you ask, I'm Jewish myself, but if you ask a lot of Jews how comfortable they feel about Galloway in the House of Commons, they will give you an answer that is pretty clear, not very comfortable at all. And it is an acceptance speech, Ava. He said, this is for Gaza. Um, that's already giving Keir Starmer problems. We had the debacle last week, which whole last week's show talking about, where, you know, there was this extraordinary set of events in, in the House of Commons really helping, trying to help Keir Starmer through what is a big problem in his own party, that it is very divided, probably accurately reflecting the country on this issue of the conflict between Hamas and Israel. Mm -hmm. And having someone there constantly prodding him, reminding him that he has this problem on the left of his party isn't going to help them as they run up to an election, is he? Because George Galloway, we know we know a lot about George Galloway. One of the main things we know about him, apart from he's uh, uh, great at impersonating cats, uh, meow. <laughs> but the other thing we know is he's not quite... He's a brilliant orator, isn't he? There's a couple of things going on here. So, so for the one thing, so George Galloway did run this by-election as a de facto referendum on Gaza. That's how he was pitching it to the electorate in the constituency. He was saying, if you vote for me, this is a clear signal to Keir Starmer that you want more he done He said it could lead to the removal Gaza. of Keir Starmer as one of his claims. He did absolutely say that. But also, to be clear, George Galloway is not someone who represents the left and the left of Labour. He's actually... A lot of his ideas are very socially conservative mm. and totally incongruous with a lot of the way that the socialists in the Labour Party feel. But also going back to your vetting point that uh, Matt was just talking about there, um, you know, Azar Ali was vetted really carefully. He's actually a Starmer ally. He's not from the left of the party. He's not someone that you would assume would be a uh, Gaza sympathiser. You know, he came out, he was very vocal in his defence of Dame Louise Elman when she was suffering, you know, horrific mm. anti-Semitic abuse. He's also been an advisor to Tony Blair about inter-community relations. You know, this was actually a real shock to people in Lotto. They had no idea that this video would have ever surfaced. OK. And, uh, Matthew, George Galloway has made some extraordinary allegations on Times Radio earlier today, claiming uh, that Labour councillors were asking voters in Rochdale to swear on the Koran uh, that they would support the Labour Party's suspended candidate, as our Ali, and he, he goes on to say, this is George Galloway, not necessarily in Times Radio, this is what he said, this is a criminal offence that I'm about to allege including some councillors bringing the Quran into people's houses and asking them to vote and swear on the Quran that they would support the Labour candidate. Of course, wasn't the Labour candidate at that point. Um, that's a very serious allegation, isn't it? It's just bizarre. I mean, this was a, a, a murky, murky by-election. You had three former Labour candidates. You had two former Labour MPs standing for different parties, so George Galloway and then Simon Dunchuk, who was standing for reform. And you had, of course, Azar Ali, as we're discussing, who was still literally the Labour candidate on the ballot, although not officially selected anymore, not officially 
supported rather by Keir Starmer. Well, but the, these comments, we'll see where it goes. But these comments again, and this is the sort of thing George Galloway can and will do, is chuck these big problems at Keir Starmer. And then that's that's, the in, that's what's interesting that. politically. OK, yeah. let's step back from Rochdale. It matters, sure. of course, in its own right. Let's step back from that and look at the wider political scene. He's saying that this is Starmer's worst nightmare. He wants to stand yeah. candidates in lots of constituencies and Labour constituencies. The question is, can he do the same sort of damage to Labour that reform Richard Tice, well, and, I think, and, will do to the Tories. I, I, I suspect damage. not, but we can't rule it out. Well, he's got form. He's done damage to them before.